What is the greatest police series of all time? A question that yields a wide variety of answers, from Barney Miller to Law and Order. But the one that tops our list today is the unlikely Hill Street Blues, a phenomenal show that not many people watched, at least at first. But they got some huge help from their network, being the first weekly series to receive $1 million to film one single episode. NBC knew what it had, a show that was unlike anything else, a delicious mix of drama and comedy, and featuring a wide cast of multi-dimensional cops. The cast of Hill Street Blues is one of the more infamous ensembles in TV history, and the show is regarded as a hallmark in American dramatic television, and was nominated for a record 21 Emmys for its first season alone, despite the low ratings. And now that it's been off the air, for 30 years. Let's catch up with our favorite officers of the law. I'm Nostalgic Nick and if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives like this. All right, let's get to the morning briefing before we miss item nine. The um, poop scoop law goes into effect today. Daniel J. Trevanti. Captain Frank Ferrillo is very good at bureaucracy and leadership. The captain is articulate, great at reading people, and determined to do the right thing no matter what anybody thought. He was the calm eye in the middle of the storm. Daniel Trevanti began working in Hollywood in 1963, highlighted by a two-parter of Flipper and four episodes of The FBI. Trevanti was a TV darling and graced Kojak and Barnaby Jones all before becoming Captain Ferrillo. And for his captain, he won two Emmys out of five nominations. But perhaps even more impressive, he developed into an unlikely sex symbol at age 41. More of a TV actor, two films that do stand Stand out. One co starring with Chris Christopherson in the sci fi thriller Millennium in 1989. And then in 1995, he was a part of a stacked cast along with Sean Connery in the courtroom crime drama Just Calls. In 1993, he headlined another police TV series titled Missing Person. And Daniel is still at it today, most recently completing five episodes, the last in 2019 of NCIS Los Angeles. In June 1995, he sold his Hill Street Blues bought home in Pacific Palisades to none other than Arnold Schwarzenegger and Maria Schreiber. So it's safe to assume he downsized after that, and the 81-year-old actor is hopefully relaxing somewhere on a beach. Michael Warren. Well, hallelujah, cowboy. Bobby Hill is a patrol officer and Andy Renko's partner. You know, the salt and pepper of the bunch. Bobby is generally kind and makes an extra effort to help less fortunate citizens. Michael Warren stepped onto the scene in 1970. His first mainstay gig was on the short-lived Yosemite action series Sierra in 1974. But before he broke into acting, Michael Warren was a jock, playing college basketball at UCLA. And he was good, a three-year varsity letterman and starting guard from 66 to 68. He was named to the NCAA All-Tournament team, one of three players on that UCLA team to do so, along with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and guard Lucius Allen. This team is one of the best in college basketball history. Just prior to Hill Street, we saw him on the pre-Hill Street attempt by show creator Steven Bochco. The series Paris starred James Earl Jones, but it didn't get past one season. And that kind of sums up Warren's career. He deserved a lot more credit. In 2000, he co-starred with Blair Underwood in the hospital drama City of Angels, and we last saw him in the 2019 film American Skin, written, directed, and starred in by Nate Parker. Today, Warren is 76 years old and lives in LA with his second wife, Jenny, and their two children. And Michael has two children from his first marriage, too. His son, Cash, is married to another great actor, the gorgeous and talented Jessica Alba. Bruce Whites, an extremely capable undercover detective. Mick Belker is small in stature, yet strong and wiry and fast. You can't forget his unusual eccentricities, like dressing in torn and dirty clothes, frequently consuming pungent foods, and calling all bad guys hairball. He really was a hound. Bruce Whites hit the biz in 1975 and hot. 
guest starring on Columbo and Ryan's Hope. In 1991, he joined the Jamie Lee Curtis series Anything But Love, which I think was a really smart and silly show. In 2007, he began a long arc on the popular soap General Hospital, completing a whopping 254 episodes. He then took about a decade off before completing one episode in the Apple TV show For All Mankind in 2021. So it appears the 78-year-old actor is not hanging it up yet. White was married to actress Cecilia Hart from 1971 until 1980, before she divorced to marry James Earl Jones, who she starred alongside Warren in that series Paris. Small world, or small city, James B. Sicking. Hi! I don't like the indiscriminate use of Taekwondo, Frank, but I cannot abide close confinement. Sergeant Hunter is the commander of the emergency action team and loves to postulate and theorize about the degeneration of society. Hey, I think he was on to something. James Sicking began acting in the early 60s and hit most of the shows on air, from two episodes of Combat and three more of The Fugitive. For Hill Street Blues, he based his portrayal of Hunter on a drill instructor he knew in the military. After Hill Street, he became Dr. David Hauser, aka Doogie's dad, on Doogie Hauser, MD. Once again, working with Hill Street Blues creator Stephen Bochco. Sicking's done a ton of TV work, but also some prominent film work too, from 1980s Ordinary People to playing the FBI director in The Pelican Brief. He hasn't really worked since a 2012 episode of The Closer. And today, the 87-year-old actor is enjoying life, married to Florine, whom he met while at UCLA. And he enjoys watching his son act, Andrew Sicking, who was on 12 episodes of NYPD Blue. Because like father, like son. Joe Spano. Sergeant Henry Goldblum is often in charge of negotiating hostage situations because he's calm and meek. In 1968, Joe Spano helped found the Berkeley Repertory Theater, and he stayed with the company for a decade. He began acting in Hollywood in 1972, an early role alongside the recently departed Meatloaf in the movie Roadie in 1980. Following his success in Hill Street Blues, he continued to land more police shows, Murder One in 1995, and NYPD. PD Blue in 2001. He's had one heck of a busy career too. From 2003 to 2021, he played TC Fornell on the hit show NCIS. Today, Joe is 75 years old and still rocking the stage. And along with his acting credit, he has one major pizza one. Hello! You know I'm here to make it a pizza. Being the original voice of Pascally the Chief for the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic show. That is awesome. Torian Black. Detective Neil Washington is a former football player whose career ended due to a knee injury. He's a very good undercover officer, earning him respect from the captain. Torian Black has been acting since 1976. Some early roles include two episodes each of The Bob Newhart Show and Good Times. He dabbled in film, beginning with a small lawyer role in Rocky II. But after his Hill Street success, he landed a lead role alongside BJ himself, Greg Evigan, in the 1980s. 89 sci-fi film Deep Star 6. Torian was in over a hundred episodes of the soap opera Generations in the 90s, and has been a working stage actor in Atlanta, Georgia for much of his career, including a 24-episode arc on the show Savannah in 1997. The last role we saw him in was a 2018 episode of the show Kevin Probably Saves the World, starring Jason Ritter, John's talented son. Today, Torian is 80 years old and is a very generous man. He was the spokesman for the County of Los Angeles Adoption Services. Although he had no adoptive children at the time, he was not eligible to adopt because he was single, but he pressed on and eventually adopted 10 children in addition to the two sons he had. And in 1989, he was asked by President George H.W. Bush to serve as the national spokesman for adoption. Keel Martin. If I got a few personal problems, it's this. Lousy, stinking, rotten job that gave him to me. Detective J.D. LaRue is a great undercover cop whose sharp detective skills are constantly marred by his poor life choices, like heavy drinking, womanizing, and frequent get-rich-quick schemes. And similar to his detective character, Keel was also a recovering alcoholic. 
Martin began his path in Hollywood in 1967 with three episodes of The Virginian, and in 1971 he got a huge break, part of the Al Pacino-led film The Panic in Needle Park. In 75, he co-starred with James Mitchum in the Guy Waldron film Moonrunners, which Waldron would expound upon for his hit series The Dukes of Hazard. Keel was married three times, first in 1969 to Claudia Martin, the daughter of the King of Cool, Dean Martin. They had one daughter together named Jessie, but the marriage ended after two years. Sadly, Keel Martin's career was cut short when he was diagnosed with lung cancer before passing away at just 46 years old. December of 1990, just a few days shy of the new year, and they had no funeral for the departed actor, in accordance to what Keel stated in his will. Betty Thomas Whoever stole the podium, I hope you get hit by a truck. Officer Bates is initially depicted as overly emotional and self-conscious, especially of her 6'1 stature, but she soon became a tough, capable officer, the prototype for a female cop. Betty Thomas began working in films in 1976. You may recall her as a waitress in the Tommy Lee Jones flick Jackson County Jail, but her best known role was of course Officer Bates, and she gained a ton of critical attention for the part, earning seven Emmy nominations for Best Supporting Actress and taking home the award for the fifth season in 85, beating out Doris Roberts from Remington Steel. But Betty was a funny gal. She was a member of the Second City comedy troupe coming up. So after Hill Street, she was really funny as the butch nemesis opposite Shelley Long in Troop Beverly Hills. But after this gem of a family flick, she decided to change things up and began directing. After lying to a variety reporter about directing an episode of John Ritter's Hooperman, the show's executive producer took her on, and she began her directorial career with three episodes of Hooperman. In addition to the second ever episode, episode of Doogie Howser, which is really cool of creator Steven Bochco to take a chance on his old officer. And in 1993, Betty received her second Emmy Award, this time for directing the HBO series Dream On. She never lost her taste for satire, and her best box office success was the 1995 parody The Brady Bunch Movie. Then she moved on to the 1998 Eddie Murphy-led Dr. Doolittle. The last film she directed was Alvin and the Chipmunks the Squeakwool, which became the first female-directed picture to gross more than $200 million. She is one of just two female directors and the only solo one to have multiple films on the 17 highest US grossing movies. She last directed a few episodes of the show Grace and Frankie in 2020, and today at 74 years old, we hope to see more award-winning projects from Betty soon. There have been many great police shows in TV history, but this not only eclipsed the genre, but also helped form the deep TV drama that we've grown to love today. From The Sopranos to Breaking Bad, they all give thanks to the blues, where drama began. So let's talk. Who is your favorite character on Hill Street Blues? And if this is not the best police series of all time, what is and why? Get in those comments and let us know. As always, don't forget to smash that thumbs up icon for us and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching and hey, let's be careful out here.